took us forever. Like, maybe we should start waking up at like five in the morning and coming to these shows because I always forget how long it takes us to set up and it doesn't help that I did a mock set up and then forgot how it goes. But luckily I'm next to two friends for this show. Um, today's hours are, I believe, to, it says it on the back of our badges, it goes from 12 to 7. Um, but yeah, we have some new, newish stuff up, um, only in the sense of what I couldn't put up at Grand Rapids Comic Con, and I was actually to lay out the Eda bags, but yeah. So here goes day one. Here's the back of the booth. Since it's an eight foot table, Christina has a little section where she can do the pins and the, the stickers, and then I have the bottles, and I just left the wagon like that so that I can get all the inventory without having it everywhere. And then I got a new chair. We'll see if I actually sit in it, because I like standing, because I never stand enough. So, yeah. Got the, the charms hanging up, the plushies, and the glasses. And then look, it's Cat. So it's, it's 5.16 now, um, show closes at 7 tonight, and I mean, for Friday it was pretty good. I will say I saw a lot of people that I normally see, so I, I was happy with that. The Motor City last year, um, in October wasn't very good, but I think, um, that's because they didn't market it as well but I think this one is a lot better. It's in November, so I'm wondering if it was marketed. People actually knew that there was a second show, so I think this one's gonna be really good. It is day two of Grand Rapids Comic Con. No. It's While I say Grand Rapids! <laughs> it is day two of Motor City Comic Con. Uh, me and Justine are on the way. We should be there in like 30-ish minutes, so we'll see you then. Tired and the vlog camera doesn't ever want to. It just likes you. I don't know. 
Maybe I'm just that photogenic. So, for our midday check-in here, uh, it's about halfway through the day, it's like 2.30ish. We're at about 50 sales right now, so we're doing pretty good. So I wanted to apologize, I haven't been around very much. I've been very busy with full-time teaching or substituting and all that kind of stuff. So, it's been a little hectic on my end, but I'm glad to be back, back in the con scene. Hi, how are you? <laughs> so yeah, we'll, we'll check back in around closer to the end of the con. So far, so good. I have frizzy hair, but it's the basically the end of Motor City Comic Con. We're packing up now. Yeah, it's slow. There's just people trickling out now. Steven's suddenly uh, packing up now, um, which is what you do. When it hits like 4.30, we just kind of put everything away as much as we can without looking like we're closing down. It just helps get the process started. Um, but yeah, I'm so sorry that my vlogs have been very small. I've just been, it's been really busy at both of them. So now we're just enjoying it. So that's a wrap on uh, Motor City Comic Con. We are on the way home. Uh, overall, good show. Good show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're both definitely a little tired, but overall it was really fun. See a lot of our um, friends that we know already, but we did meet a lot of new artists as well. We didn't get to talk to a lot of them because we're enclosed in our own little friend group. So it was just more or less us joking around and having fun behind the table, but it, it was nice. Yep, plenty of shenanigans behind the table. We're gonna try to apply to the May one, but I get waitlisted for that one, so we'll see what happens. But um, I, I, my friend said that she almost did as much as she did at the May one, which is great because the Motor City last year, their second show was in October, and it didn't, it wasn't great. Uh, I think it's because a lot of people just didn't know that there was going to be a second one that year. And it was pretty um, close to the other one, so I guess people were like, I already won it, so... Our next show is going to be Galaxy Con. Well, technically, it's Fantastic Con, but if you've been following my Instagram story, <laughs> uh, you know that it just... The first Fantasticon didn't work out time. Why don't you tell them what happened? All right, <laughs> so let's talk about Fantasticon. Um, so for a frame of reference, Fantasticon, uh, the one that we were going to go to first was in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And we're based out of Michigan, so it was a fairly long drive. It's about a three, three and a half hour drive for us to get there. Um, and we got there, I think at what, 9.42 or something like no, no, that? No, no, we got there at like 9.30. That's when, um, so load-in times was, were between, um, I think it was like 8 and 8 to 9.30, which also only gives you an hour and a half to set up and load in and everything, which is kind of not possible for a lot of artists, not possible for me at least. So yeah, during that load-in time, uh, at the very tail end of it, we arrived. And when we showed up, um, we walked up to the sort of front of house area with the registration tables and everything. And we said, hey, we're trying to check in. We're Lucky Cat Market. Um, and the the man at the desk said, you guys are late. We sold your table. And we were like, well, we're still technically within. He said, no, you had to be here at exactly 8 AM. And mind you, we looked at all of the communications that we had received up to that point and none of them explicitly stated mandatory report time at 8 o'clock. Yeah, or, nor did it say that they were going to sell it. But the thing is, is that we found out that they oversold tables and the person who had set up at my table um, actually like bought the table but 
before load-in times. They had told them that they had ta extra tables, so they sold one, which was basically my table. And I was like, okay, so even if I did show up between loading times, my table was still sold. Yeah, so not a great look uh, when we tried talking with him uh, and we found out later he was the owner of the convention or the showrunner, however you want to put it. Yeah. Um, and he was just a total brick wall. Like, no, he did not budge. He, yeah, he did not want to talk about it at all. So we don't have the best, um, I guess, opinion about yeah. the show at the moment. <laughs> uh, we're going to kind of just see what happens when we go to their follow-up show in Port Huron. Yeah, that's uh, on November 18th, and that one's in Port Huron. And I don't know, I don't even want to do it anymore, but I already paid for it. And I've tr been trying to get a refund for uh, Fort Wayne, which he told me in person, he said he would give me a refund. Mm -hmm. And I sent him an email when uh, that same day when we got home, and I said, okay, I want my refund. And then, like, two weeks later, they finally reached out and were like, you never bought a table. And I showed him, I sent him a screenshot of the receipt, I sent him a screenshot of the receipt confirmation, and table confirmation and then a, a screenshot of them saying hey we see that you bought a table yeah so we sent them their own confirmation email from fantasticon that said thanks for buying a table for our fort wayne show why they tried to you know con us out of thinking that we never bought a space there is kind of beyond me but so whatever we're going to de demand a refund there and it kind of depends on if they let me continue to be in the port here on the show. Yeah, so we're going to see what happens and we'll we'll keep you all updated, to say the least. Keep an eye on our Instagram. I'm sure we'll keep it posted there. I, I'm glad to see everybody at uh, Motor City that came and said hi and everything. And I, I have people telling me that they watch my videos and I'm like, what? Yeah. But if, when you guys come up and say like you recognize us from the channel, it's it's mind blowing to us, and it really it does push us to to kind of keep going for it. So thank you. And if if you do see us at a show and you've watched the channel, then uh, let us know. Seriously, it means a lot. So, anywho, we will see you, see you at the next show. Bye. Bye.